In this video, I'm going to go over the basic programming of the ERA UTX to the ERA DCRX receiver. Now in front of you, you see all of the different products in the ERA series of products. We've got different transmitters and sensors and three different receiver types. And it's important to know that you can mix and match all of these products. You can have different receivers working with transmitters, different transmitters or sensors working with different receivers. You can have an unlimited number of receivers associated with a transmitter and up to 12 transmitters can be associated to a single receiver. There's a line of sight operating range of 4,000 feet between the transmitters and the receivers. And the first receiver is the ERA VPRX. Now let's say portable vibrating receiver. It can be set to sound mode, silent mode, vibrate mode, or a combination of sound and vibrate. It has a included uh, belt clip as well as a built-in rechargeable battery pack as well as a charger. Next is the ERA RXPG. Now this plugs into a standard wall outlet. It's got three modes of operation, sound only, strobe only, and strobe and sound. The ERA DCRX desktop receiver, it sits flat on a desktop, or you can mount it on the wall with the pre-molded holes on the back. We've got the ERA PBTX push button. Now you notice when I push this button, there's a green LED that illuminates to signal that it is transmitting. And at night, it emits a very low or faint green LED just so visitors can find it easily at night. The ERA DSTX is an outdoor passive infrared driveway sensor. We've got the ERA PIR which is an indoor passive infrared motion sensor and the ERA EXTX. Now this is a wired doorbell extender. It wires into a wired doorbell. When that doorbell is triggered it will then send a radio signal to compatible ERA receivers. So if you have trouble hearing the wired doorbell in your home, wire this in. The plug-in receiver, as an example, will trigger and play the strobe light or an associated song, etc. Finally, we've got the ERA UTX. Now this is a ruggedized, outdoor, weatherproof push button or may also be used as a door window contact. Now, we're not gonna go over the specifics of the other receivers and the different uh, transmitter sensors here. You can consult the specific user manual for details. You also need to consult those manuals on how to install a battery. It's important to know that the basic programming is the same on all of the receiver types and all of the push buttons. There are some nuances on how to put it into programming mode and how to trigger the transmitter. And when I talk about triggering the transmitter, in this case, it's pushing the center button. You notice the red LED illuminates, meaning it is transmitting a radio signal. In the PBTX push button, I push it. You see the green light. I'm triggering it there. On the DSTX, notice that red light went off. It detected motion, therefore it's triggered. So in programming mode, the manual calls for triggering the transmitter. And so depending on that transmitter, you're going to trigger it a little bit differently. So again, for the ERA UTX, simply push that button. If you're using it as a door window contact, there's a smaller magnet that comes with the product. You separate the magnet and then that red LED comes on again. So next is the ERA DCRX. Now, it works with up to 12 different ERA transmitters or sensors. It's got four different zones, and the transmitters, up to three per zone, can be programmed. And the reason this is a little bit different than the other receivers is that it's got these 12-volt outputs on the back, and each zone has a live 12-volt DC output. And that's so that you can put things like strobe lights or loud sirens, fire alarm bells, etc. When that push button is triggered, for example, zone one will light and then it will supply power to the 12 volt output for the set duration. 
again, consult the manual for setting the duration, how to wire it, and things like that. So now that we know the battery's installed on the UTX, we wanna make sure that the ERA DCRX is powered up. I'm gonna insert the plug-in adapter that's included with the kit. Now, when I plug it in, there's a small LED that's green that lights up on the bottom here. If you're not seeing that green LED, you just wanna turn the unit to the side and cycle through the volume button. If you notice, I've got it on mute. Now I've got it off and that LED is not lit. So I wanna push it again. That puts it at the highest volume level and that green LED is now illuminated. So there's two basic steps to programming. The first is to program the transmitter or sensor to the unit. And then secondly is set a melody to a specific zone. Now by default, the unit plays a basic ding dong sound. And so if you're okay with that, you can skip the part on programming a melody. So again, turn the unit to the side. There are three buttons. One is the mode button. Next is the zone button. And finally is the volume button. I'm gonna hold down the mode button for about three seconds and I'm gonna hear a short tone. And then the zone one LED light is blinking. So what that's telling me is when I hear that short tone and then zone one is blinking, it lets me know that I'm in programming mode for zone one. The next step is to trigger the transmitter that you want to associate with zone one. And as I said before, the transmitters are a little bit different. If it's a motion sensor, it's gonna trigger a little bit differently. But again, in this case, I'm simply gonna push the button. And when you hear that short chime sound, that just lets you know that it programs successfully. Now, if I only have one transmitter that I wanna associate with this unit, I'm basically done. If I have a second transmitter that I want to associate, I go back to the side and I'm going to click on the zone button to scroll between different zones. So I'm going to hit it again and now you see, excuse me, you're going to see zone two is blinking. So in this example, I'm going to take this PBTX push button. You hear that short chime sound that lets you know that it's programmed as well. Now I'm done. So what I want to do is exit transmitter programming. Turn it back over to the side, hold down the mode button. That short tone sound lets you know that it exited programming mode and none of the LEDs are illuminated. So just to test this out, I'm gonna push the button. That successfully programmed. Take this PBX, the second transmitter. Now, what if I wanna change these sounds a little bit? The process is very similar, but instead of pressing the mode button, I'm gonna hold down the zone button for the same duration, about three seconds. I hear the same short tone, but in this case, I see all the LEDs are illuminated except zone one is blinking. That tells me that it's programming a melody for zone one. Turn it back to the side, and now I'm gonna to toggle or scroll through the available melodies hitting the volume button. So that's the sound I want for zone one. Now I wanna to skip to zone two and program that melody. I'm gonna push the zone button again. Notice now zone two is flashing. I'm gonna go back through the scroll procedure with the volume button. So I'm gonna select the double ding dong sound for zone two. Now I'm done flip it back over and I'm gonna exit program melody mode by holding down this zone button. None of the LEDs are lit. I'm gonna test it out. So 
So there's a distinction between those sounds. I might have this as a door contact on the front door, whereas I might have this on the delivery door, and that way my users can hear a difference between the sounds and then know which push button triggered this. And again, I can mix and match. I can have this in an office or in the warehouse with a fire bell attached to it. I can have the plug-in receiver in one of the front offices and put it on strobe only because I don't want to hear the sound. And maybe my dock manager can, can work in the warehouse with this belt clip portable receiver. So again, there are some slight nuances between programming, but basically they're the same. Please consult the user manual or give us a call at 800-366-7235. Thank you.